the next during the next four years. It's really good. And you can read it like aloud if you're feeling sort of like down and you need a little pick me up. It's $17.99. It's US dollars, but I bet you could get it for, for free at your library. Get it from the library while the libraries are still here. <laughs> it's a great book. And Carol got it so I could give it to my son. If you have kids or friends or both, um, it's a good, it's a wonderful gift. And Lynn gave me this wonderful food. I'm gonna be a oh, nasty woman right on. Okay. So you know we continue. We continue. Uh, this is Watch Me Work. Who hasn't been to Watch Me Work before? Anybody? You haven't been here, so you haven't been to Watch Me Work. Are you here for Watch Me Work? Or are you just like hostages in the lobby? Poor <laughs> things. They're like, I just came for a drink, and I'm like, I'm trapped here. You didn't come. Oh, you mean me to Well, then, no, here you are. Well done, and well done. Thanks for coming. So, so I'll, I'll give you a quick rundown of what it is. So, because we have a velvet snake, that means it's a play. <laughs> That's all you need to make a play, really. So, this is a play. It's also um, a free writing workshop, okay? So, or a free creativity workshop, actually, because we have people who are doing all kinds of work, not just writers, all right? So what we do first is we create the action of the play together. So what we do is we, for 20 minutes, we'll time it, we work together. So whatever you're working on, a dance piece, a song, a writing project, whatever, 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 you work on it, okay? And we also have people online who sometimes tweet in, they've been shy lately. We know you're out there, it's okay, shy, you know, it's okay. Um, so we work together for 20 minutes and then we create the dialogue together because it's a play. And the dialogue is basically you guys' uh, asking me questions about your creative process. I'll do that gesture again. Okay, so it's you guys is asking me questions about your creative process. So if any of you want to ask me a question about my creative process, those of you who have been here before know I'm gonna make it about you. Okay, so that's kind of all there is to it, kind of, kind of, kind of. And Melissa is gonna tell the folks online how to tweet in. And tell them, like, like, not if you want to tweet in, but when you tweet in. When? Like, kind of make, I don't know. Yeah. They're, they're, well, they're sleeping. Let's if you start. follow us on Twitter, you would know, because you would know. I give you a little heads up as to where we are <coughs> in the performance. But anyways, if you'd like to tweet in, you can tweet into us. Um, our Twitter handle is um, at WatchMeWorkSLP, and then make sure to hashtag HowlRound, and that's one word, it's H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. And please, please, please send us your questions. Yes, please, please, oh, please. Please, 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 please. please. send us your questions, or don't. Because <laughs> there are a lot of people here today, and if you don't, that's fine. Um, but uh, here we are, there are people, you can hear the sound oh, of somebody. who is not shy. Someone who is not shy already. So there you go. So someone is already taking the lead. Shout out to Alicia Nash. Shout out to Alicia Nash. Alicia. Alicia? Yeah, Alicia. I have a call, so I'm so glad you're not here because I can't breathe on you. But uh, anyway, so we're gonna work for 20 minutes. I'm gonna use my phone today as a timer, okay? And we're gonna we're gonna work. I'm gonna usually I type on the typewriter, but today I have some manuscript to correct, so that's what I'm gonna do. So pretend you hear the sound of me typing.
anybody have questions <coughs> about your work? Your work? And I'll um, speak up and I'll repeat your question so that everybody can hear you. Anybody? Okay. Oh. Hi. Are you here for Watch Me Work? Oh, good. We studied some of your plays in our theater class. Oh, wow. And right on. Where do you go to, where do you teach? We're at a public school in Bushwick. Oh, right on. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. You're welcome. Here. These are some of the interested playwrights. Oh, right on. So you guys do some playwriting of your own. Yeah? How's it going? Good. Good? Yeah, that's, that's all right? Yeah? Do you write on a typewriter, or the, you don't write on a typewriter? Do you write on the computer or by hand? Both. Both by hand and hand. On, on, by hand and on the computer? Yeah? Which do you prefer? Um, I like writing on the computer because it gives us more attention and you have to write more. With the handwriting, it gives us like, if we write your hand, it will be more tiring. But yeah. Handwriting, your hand gets tired, she said. That's true. Yeah. And when you type, it's like, it's already there. You don't have to like write it and then type it, go, right? It's like one-stop shopping. That's smart, yeah. And sometimes ideas can flow more freely when you just like, cool, very cool. Anybody else? So we're just gonna just like talk and feel free to like raise your hand or like blurt something out. It's not formal, it's very informal here, okay? Anybody else have any questions about, hey, Stacy Rose. Your question, uh, your work, your creative process? You got a good amount of people here. So, does the Twitter person have a question? They're just saying hey. No, they're just saying hi. They say hi. So sweet. Okay, okay. hi. I have a question. Yes, you have a question. Go ahead. What's your name? Hi, I'm Susan. Susan, oh, okay. Hey, Susan. Um, Earlier this spring, I came back from a six-month trip to Brazil. Oh, cool. I right. came back with six notebooks, and I was right. going to work on a manuscript of like poetry and travel right. log. And right. I was procrastinating the summer and going to get back into it. Yeah. But as of a week ago, when after our election, right. I'm feeling a combination of both futility and fervor. Right. Like I feel like I need to be of service. Right. And I'm no longer interested at all in my manuscript. Um, I do understand the need for like art and literature in the uh -huh. world, but it somehow feels irrelevant to me right now. Right. So I don't know how to deal with that. Do I take a break? Do I go back to this thing? Do I take conflict resolution classes? Like <laughs> I've been disgusting. Conflict I, I was, resolution with yourself. I, I was. <laughs> there's oh, that. Oh, well, that's where it all. Conflict resolution begins at home. You know. That. Right. It begins with this when you're with yourself. Yeah. Susan, that's a really good question. Did everybody hear Susan's? Question, she came back from her trip away. She had a lot of notebooks full of ideas, full of really good ideas. And, hey, 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 hey. Hey, Alexis, Alexis is here. Because that's how cold it is outside. So she came back from the trip full of, with notebooks full of really great ideas. And she had a manuscript in mind. And then she didn't jump on it right away, per se. And then the election happened. And now she feels like, hey, I should be of service. And doing art doesn't feel like it's the way to be of the most service. Is that it just feels like my energy is no longer there. Uh -huh. And I don't uh -huh. know whether to you know, create an outlet to discipline myself and do that or take a break and do whatever is calling to me, which is right. not completely clear. Right. But it's not the manuscript at the right. moment. It's funny, I, I, like, I appreciate you telling us the whole story of the journey. And, yeah, Stacy's going in, because I bet you, Stacy knows what I'm going to say. I mean, the only, the, the thing that, that gives me a hint to what you might be more inclined to do that might be right, because you were procrastinating before the election, it might not be the thing you're supposed to be doing right now. Say, if you had hit a wall on, you know, November, 9th or, you know, which was 9-11. Well, it is, you know, if you live in Europe. <laughs> um, then that would say, mm, let's find a way to get you back on the horse, you know? But because you hit a wall before that, then I would say, maybe you're not ready to write it yet. 
So you can, exper you can do an experiment. This is fun. So you can do an experiment where you can experiment with not writing it and tell yourself, you know what? I'm going to put you away and I'm going to put it, you in an, uh, my notebooks in a... Do you have a nice like tote bag or a cloth tote bag or a nice cloth and a, like a box or something? Give it sort of a cold storage above ground urn. Don't burn it. Just put it away. I'm going to leave you alone for, I don't know, what's a good date? What do you think? A month? Yeah? A month? Today is the what? The 20th? 21st? Something like that? 21st? Okay, so you could give yourself to the 21st of December. I'm not going to think about it. I'm going to actively every day sit in my, in my writing space at my desk or whatever with my notebook and for 20 minutes a day I'm going to write on, okay, calling. You're calling me to do something. What? If it's not that, then what is it? Talk to me. I'm listening. I'm not getting them muddled up with this other project. Doesn't seem like it's ready for that yet. Here we are. What is it that you want me to do? Okay, give yourself a month and see what happens. Okay, just, okay, and I think that's a great question. So where a lot of us are at, it's like, what do I do now, you know? So give yourself a pause and see, just actively communicate with what you think might be the other project. You know? Yeah, that's good. Okay, ooh, well see, it's always fun when it's like a special day for other people too. Great, perfect, perfect, okay? Okay, that's good. And check back in, you know, if you can come back here or check in with us on, on Twitter and tell us how you're doing. Okay, thanks for asking the question. Good question. Anybody else? Yeah, Sam. I don't know the opposite reaction to the election. I'm just like, oh no. Yeah, this, this man is not going to define the next four years of my life. I have right. things to say about that. And I think. I'm thinking about what it's going to be like on 9-11 for me as a first responder to have to deal with him at Ground Zero. Right. So that's been kind of what's been interesting about that is like I've freed myself from research because I can just watch it in real time and that's kind of what I'm trying to encourage people around me but I'm mostly trying to encourage myself. So I mean, I don't know. It's been a very, it's been a very strange experience to to look at what may or may not happen and have to, you know, go through and try and figure out what 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 does this mean? I mean like what? It's I guess I all, I just kind of looked at everything and I have a I have a scene I now like have to write I have to write it. So now it's just a matter of. I, I kind of sat here and said, okay, maybe my issue is I, I don't feel it. I keep going, this happened, this happened, this happened, and then this happened. And it's something that, ha you know, at 22, to be in a foreign country and be faced with something so ridiculous, and then 30 years later say, okay, I, I'm putting, I was in Kenya, it's not something I've really talked about, and I was offered money for my passport. Yeah, you told, yeah. And it's been a very, like, I've started to talk about it, because I think it's important that people know that 9-11 didn't just happen out of the clear blue sky. Right. It was, you know, they've been working on it for 30 years. And, you know, I think about that, and it's, it's not that, I made a decision that I felt was the right decision, which is to say, no, don't ask me again. It's how, how am I implicated in the people on that trip that did? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm trying to f figure out to not feel like, okay, I'm not responsible for anybody's actions other than my own, but how I have to figure out how, how do I like navigate that? I, in I a, want you to talk about how you're gonna get your writing done. Well, that sh th that's part of it. Because that somehow... I'm writing and scrawling in a notebook, right. and that's right. I'm trying to make sense of it. Right, because somehow something that happened in the way back past um, is important to talk about, and it's important to go through and process. Um, but I, I want to talk about, you know, give you tools to take those steps out of the pit so you're not in the swirl of what happened. You know what I mean? Because um, that's not 
a good place to be. You know, we want to we want to move forward as best as best we can. So, how is your play going? It's it's getting good. It's a it's good. a difficult. I didn't realize how difficult it was because I had to just shut down and lead. And now I go, how did I end up with that? And writing down what happened each day and going through all of it. It's just getting it and having it make sense to someone other than myself. Well, I think that's the, exactly, that's what I was going to guess at. Um, the need to make sense to someone other than yourself when you write the first draft. The need to have it be good when you write the first draft. You want it to be good because you want to read it in front of your teacher, in front of your class, or in front of your friends, right? And you want it to be good, or you want to reread it and think, it's pretty good, right? We gotta let go of that, if it's gonna be anything at all. We gotta let go of the need for it to make sense to anyone other than ourselves. We gotta let go of the need for it to be good, and we gotta just embrace the need for it to be eh. And usually here, in this part of the conversation, I use another word. But I'm not going to use it because because we have friends in the audience who are, who are you know, how old are you guys? Ten. Ten. Yeah, you're ten. So okay, cool. So we're going to, you know, we're going to like amend our choices here to accommodate our, our awesome people who come uh, who are ten. Yeah. So sometimes you're right, and it's like eh, eh, yeah, yeah, uh, right. I mean, any of you have like a cat or a dog. You have a dog. Has your dog ever like thrown up? Like, and you go, look, yuck, right? So sometimes when we write, it kind of looks like that. Mm, and that's okay. That's okay. It's okay. You just have to keep moving forward. This is something, Susan, that you might tell yourself as you're talking to your project, you know? But it, you have to keep moving forward. I, I keep telling you guys that. You just have to keep moving forward and writing to the end, and then seeing what you got, and make it better from there. Okay? Stacy, you had a question. Yeah. Um, I actually wanted to contribute, um, and remember last week I was telling you that I was having a really hard time getting back into it, and taking a little bit, and doing all that, and I've been doing that. And <clears throat> a lot of the issue I was having was around the election, what and was around everything that was swirling around it, but what I came to find and what I discovered through just meeting with friends and hanging out and reading profusely, going to see shows, just, just involving myself and determining what I, like, I thought about it and I was like, well, I'm 40 and I'm gonna die. And what I'm not gonna change between now and the time I die is what happens to this country in any large scale. So what can I do to make, to, like, what do I want to do with this time and how can it be more productive? Well, I can't think of anything I'd rather do than write plays. And so it's like investing myself in that has helped me, one, calm down, and two, find a voice for what it is I want to say and who I want to help. And so it's sort of like I can't, I can't change the political construct of this country with one play. I just can't. No matter how long I write it, no matter how long I rewrite it, I can't. But I can push and help others push to make their art and express themselves and go into communities I feel concerned for and be of help in that way, whether it's with my art or whatever. But it makes me feel useful. And um, so, yeah, I just, you know, just dig in, just dig in deeper into what you were already doing and just find what you love and do it. You are like, for me, this, this, just the week, it just feels different. Like I just decided to dig in and it's just been such a great, it's not been a great week, but it's just been a week where I feel like I have some type of hold on something and that this election and this, this new president and his administration is not going to dictate who I am as an artist for the rest of my life. Good job. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, I mean, I, I was telling a friend the other day, I would love nothing more to be proven wrong. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, hey, prove me wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't mind, I don't mind. I'll stand up, you know, wherever, and say, like, I'm wrong. 
sincerely you know I apologize as my son says I apologize will you accept my apology I, I would love to be proven wrong you know I will apologize to that man every day of my life if I am proven wrong I don't mind being wrong so let's bring it on let's see yeah Dan because <laughs> I remember your name man hey hey Even though you moved. I did. I couldn't hear. Um, and it was like the book section, and I was like, well, in case another book comes through, I better be ready. Um, <laughs> so I, I just had a workshop of a play I've been working on yes. for too long, I think. Uh, maybe not so, but uh, nonetheless, a play I've been working on for a while, and I'm like, okay, I've looked at you for a long time. Right. And I didn't like Act 2, and I think I found the way to fix it, but I, my question is about the process of like working with other people on let's say like a rewrite that you're not like super keen about like you're like thinking in your head like oh this sucks this sucks this sucks like do 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 like how do you be like productive in a workshop room when you're not liking your own work that's on the page in front of everyone? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Okay, well I'll say something back that already happened, but it's tricky because when I have a draft or something that I, I mean the question is why did you bring it to a workshop if you weren't relatively pleased with it. Was it the deadline? Had someone commissioned it and said, you must bring it on the 10th of November? It was a deadline. Deadline and then election, so my... No, 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 don't, don't. We, 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 we let us promise to ourselves and everyone we love that we will not blame the election for any short of our own shortcomings. Why did you bring it to workshop if you weren't happy with it? Why did you bring it to workshop? This is because this is a question that you're gonna have to ask yourself. Why did you bring it to the workshop if you were not happy with the play? Because it was like one of the like write and uh, like uh, new pages in the morning workshop. It was like we worked on it at night, and then I had new pages that I wrote. I came with the next day, and I didn't like the pages, but it was a deadline, and I thought I would like the pages. So, okay, so a structural flaw, perhaps. But okay. when you're in that situation, when you're in the sure. trench. Okay, so you were you was it was a, a, a that was a construct of the workshop. Yeah. Yeah. Writing pages, bringing in workshop. Right. Okay, so you were kind of like, it had to happen when it happened because you decided to workshop. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, so you're in a situation that's far from perfect. Okay? So what you did, and people are reading your work and you're like, not in love with it. Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay, and so what do you do? Right? That's the question. What do you do? Okay, yeah. So what do you do? No, what do I do? I'm not doing anything. I'm over here. <laughs> yeah, so what do you do? If you can, like, sort of, uh, have you ever walked down the street and you hear a really loud noise, like someone, maybe one of those hardworking people who's doing construction, uh, jackhammer, and you're like, oh, man, or, or uh, ambulance goes by, really, really loud, or fire trucks, they're going to save somebody, right? And you hear that, and you think, oh, so loud. And you see people all around you going like that? Yeah, okay. That might be effective. What is also effective is to hum a tone in your head. I just started doing this because I didn't want to be one of those people doing that. I just wanted to keep walking. I wanted to keep walking, right? So I started to hum a tone in my head, any tone. So I've been doing this for years. So my now fiance, I, we were walking down the street and I go, woo, like that. And he goes, how do you know how to do that? And I'm like, what do you mean? I just made it up. He said, no, no, no. Bose noise canceling headphones, it's built around the same idea. The noise, right. So this is what you do. When you're in a workshop where it's really, really hard, you give yourself a tone that you can hold on to. So you're not listening to the voices that are negative, not the voices of the actors. They're wonderful. The voices telling you, this is shit, this is awful, yeah, 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 yeah. So you give yourself a tone to hold on to. This is good, I'm only gonna make it better. I'm so proud of myself for writing these five pages or whatever. I'm gonna write five more. The actors are gonna teach me so much. Isn't it great that I got accepted to this workshop? This is wonderful, I'm happy to be here. Look, I'm healthy. 
look, I live in such a cool city. Whatever you want to say, give yourself things to say that are positive, encouraging, uplifting, and will encourage you to go forward. Right? Okay? And they will cancel out those sounds that you don't need entering your head. Okay? Even if you have to write in your notebook, I'm only going to make this better. Ooh, that was a silly line. It's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. You know, right? Uh, it's only going to get better. Okay, there you go. That's, so there you go. So you got it already. I just want to turn your first like a better focus. And I think, I think the tone in your head is good. The tone in your head. Bose noise canceling headphones use it. And they're, you know, ka-ching. You know? But, the, but that's basically what you're doing. You're giving yourself a uh, mantra is called, uh, what, is the, what is actually the, the uh, uh, I think it, it's uh, mind vaccine mantra. Yeah, mind vaccine. One of my fabulous yoga teachers told me that mantra, the, one of the translations is mind vaccine. So I don't know if anybody's an anti-vaxxer in the house. I don't know, what you, whatever your parents did, that's cool. But, um, yeah, uh, so mind vaccine. It helps you inoculate yourself against the SHIT. I know you guys can spell it. <laughs> Good question. Yeah. So we have uh, well, so a bunch of questions, but I'll just pick one for time's sake. Um, from Alicia Nash. Yeah. And she says, how do you break up scenes? How do you know a scene is complete? Because she's afraid that sometimes she's boring and sometimes has early conflict. Alicia says, how do you break up scenes and how do you know a scene is complete? Okay, so there's different ways. You can do it by math, right? Scenes, okay? So you can do it by, they're called, if you go to grad school or talk to people who go to grad school or undergrad school, they'll talk, they'll use a term called French scenes, which might be like, well, French K S S I N G, but um, I don't know. French scene is when an actor exits the stage, right? And that's usually means a scene is over, or a scene, there's a demarcation over the end of a scene. Um, I think of it like a, if you throw a ball in the air and it lands, you know? An actor is trying to do something and they reach, they're trying to cross the river and they step from one stone to another, their foot goes down, right? Or, yeah. Yeah. It's an organic thing. I would say if you have a big question about that, read a lot of well-structured plays. And it can be expensive to go to plays these days, but you can certainly, at the library again, read a lot of well-structured plays. They can be classics, they can be contemporary plays, and you'll see there's a pattern that emerges. You'll see the pattern, the organization of action. Um, Sometimes, yeah, your scenes are gonna be too long. You, do, you work that out in workshop. You know, when you're seeing, oh, this is so boring. And you can do cuts, so don't worry about getting it perfect before you go to workshop. But if you have a real question about it, read some well-structured plays, and you'll see how the action rises and falls in a scene. Okay? It's a craft thing, but we love craft things. Anybody else? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what, what that means. I mean, I mean, I'm trying to think, what great, what great plays have like early conflict, right, right away, like, and then Hamlet, he's like, what, what, there's a ghost, what? I mean, that's like in the first like seven pages, right? I mean, that's swear, 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 the ghost goes swear, swear, swear. I mean, that's, that's in the first. Rushing? Rushing? bring up something else that has nothing to do with the argument just to like start something like that can happen sometimes in like yeah. plays or movies like if you watch a really crappy movie sometimes and like it's like okay why are they fighting like sudden uh, I don't know I think that's what she okay. meant I'm not okay. sure that's what, ooh, that's what you. and maybe that well, do you have Dan? yeah, yeah maybe that's but the early conflict thing I mean as you said like it's most plays have like conflict baked into the structure of it like it immediately is happening um, and so I guess if we're talking about like early conflict, maybe like what you're thinking is that you're like laying it bare too quickly, where it's like very clear, like okay, this character is this problem, this character is this problem, and 
I guess what I'd recommend, like when you look at a play that seems like there's not action happening at the beginning, if it's a good play, this is a generalization, but if it's a good play, usually the conflict's already happening, they're just not talking about it directly. So then when you're going back, I suppose, over like writing like exposition or stuff like that, if you make sure that like, okay, they're fighting over an apple in this first scene, like half-heartedly, like it's a joke, da da da. But if it's actually like speaking to what's gonna happen later in the play in some way that the conflict is already there between these two characters, they're already not seeing eye to eye, then you're on the right track. Um, conflict that's happening early, maybe that's just the tip of the iceberg. Keep going. Get to the end of your play. <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep going. I keep saying the same, the same thing. Right to the end, and then you'll see, oh, is that conflict that happened on page two? She slapped him. Boom! Maybe did that, that work? Maybe it, it lights up, she slaps him. Boom! I don't know, is that too early? I don't know. Let's see the rest of the play. You know what I mean? So we're trying to figure out everything without having get go, you know, going all the way to the end. So go to the end, and then you can just move things around instead of trying to rewrite that first seven pages and make them perfect because you don't know. You know, early conflict is so, you know. I mean, it's like you're dating. That's the other thing I always say. Oh, it's like, just pretend, pretend, well, pretend I'm here, but I'm saying other things. So it's like you're, you're meeting somebody new, right? And you like you don't want to like overshare, right? You don't want to tell them like everything about yourself, right? You want to tell them a few things, you know, because they're your new friend, right? You know what I'm talking about. You want to you don't want to overshare, and that's that might be like early conflict. I don't know, but sometimes early conflict works out great. It's hard to tell. Just write the damn thing to the end. <laughs> the darn thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go. So totally opposite direction, not crap. I um, recently started writing yeah. about a family trauma that's still going on. Oh, wow. And I'm writing it obviously for myself because I need to write it. It could be good or whatever, important one day. I'm writing it now because it needs to be, because I, I don't know how long it will go on, so why wait? Right. The challenge I'm having is that um, one of the family members I feel fine with, but the other family member I feel like I'm betraying them by writing their part into the story, and I know this is something people deal with a lot, but I'm just, you know, I keep having that conflict inside, not knowing if I should just write it all, or maybe focus on one part of what's going on, um, so that I feel better about what I'm writing. That's a great question. Miyasha. Miyasha. Uh -huh. That's a really great question. Everybody here can ask this question. She writes a story about a play, about a family of trauma that's still going on. A story about a family trauma that's still going on, and she wonders she she feels some kind of apprehension because she doesn't want to be unjust to some of the people who are involved, right? So you could, I mean, you know, yeah, people ask this question a lot, and it's good, it's lucky for us that people ask this question a lot because there are answers like Long Day's Journey and Tonight. Have you ever heard of that play? Right. So he wrote Long Day's Journey Tonight, Eugene O'Neill, the fabulous writer, Eugene O'Neill, and he wrote Long Day's Journey Tonight, and he said, yo, no, he didn't say yo, but maybe he did, yo, don't put on this play, ever, I think. 25 years. Well, for 25 years. Ah, see, people know this. Don't put on this play for 25 years, until I'm dead, or something. Right, until I'm dead, after I'm dead, 25 years after my death. Right, exactly, okay? So that's, and, and he died, and then people put it on right away, which, you know, but, but you can do, some, what you can do is write the story or whatever and just put it in an envelope and put it away. You don't have to show it to the world. You don't have to send it to the New Yorker and get it published or send it to the public theater and get, you know, work to get a show or do a workshop. Not at all. Write it. Write it fully as you think it should be written and then just put it in an envelope and put it away. And maybe like we have Susan doing, check back in with it in six months or a year and see how you feel about it. No? But that not that doesn't need to stop you. The not wanting to do injustice to people who are involved. That's a great question. Yes. Yes. How many how many you know, so this is so the thing about this, I make it about you. So when you ask me a question about me, I make it about you. So the question was how many plays have you written? So this is the question, how many plays have you written? What's your favorite part 
of writing? Do you like the first draft or the rewriting or what's your favorite part? You like having them published? A lot of people get to see your ideas when you're hanging up on the board at school. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I know that is kind of the fun part, right? And it makes all that hard work worthwhile. All the like, oh gosh, what am I doing? You know, I got to keep writing. The the payoff we call it, you know, is when you get them published or you get them on the board at school. You know, how many people like that part the best? Getting published, Stacy. Getting, getting it done? Yeah, some people say, I like having written. Some people say that a lot. I like having written. Really? Okay. You like that part? No. Yeah, you like having, you get, like getting up on the board and having it published? Yeah, I, I like writing the best. I like writing. I like the actual thing of, the it of it, more than anything else. I like the relationship about I know, which is why I'm like I'm engaged. I'm like I'm like do you know I gotta yeah, tell you guys yeah we voted for love on on election day, so we went to, uh, what we found out was the dark tower. We went to Tiffany, which is right next to the dark tower, and got the ring. Oh. So now it's a Lord of the Rings uh, saga. Um, my my relationship now. We went to the dark tower and got a ring, so uh, we're gonna be all right. Yeah. So, but anyway, uh, but yeah, I, I like writing. Writing is fun because you get to sort of commune with that spirit that's always talking to you. The spirit is whispering in your ear saying, keep going, keep going. You're doing great. Sure. So, are we, are we time? Are we time? Thank you guys so much for coming. So we're going to be here not next week. Or we're going to be here next week at 5 p.m. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for your tweets, too. Thank you, guys. You guys are great. Woo. And it was, it was quiet downstairs. Thank the, thank the house. Once. Yeah, they really, they rock.